Hey everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I got my sunglasses and get ready to go outside. Why? Because it's a beautiful day. We're going to get up to 80 degrees here, maybe next couple days. And uh, walking barefoot into the studio here today. I was thinking about some things and kind of waiting to check up and see what the world did. I bet you were too. Today is the tomorrow of yesterday. And we were all saying, hey, tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. Well, tomorrow's here, guys. So, before I head out where it's noisy, I wanted to go ahead and talk about a couple things. It's been a while. Now, sometimes people come visit. I know you're all busy like I am. So, I try to get these out there when I get a chance. What's going on right now is kind of interesting, in case you're not paying attention. So I just want to touch base, not political world, in my, my little fantasy world. That one back here, you know, where I'm out in the forest, or out on, my, out on that big CGI platform I have out there that goes all the way around with caves and ponds and all that stuff. Well, I gave everybody an idea of some of the materials we have sitting in 150,000 square foot of warehouses. And that's wood, windows, doors, train depot windows where the tickets were kept in 1900, beams, things you can use to build, say, a small community out in the country someplace, outside the city, outside the reach of the crazies that are running the imaginary world that Darby is writing about in the book of Wibblery and Wub. Wub, W-U-B. People think I'm stuttering or something. No, that's it stands for a bunch of things, just like love does. You know, love is a word that describes a lot of things. Problem is, it gets used too much. Like, I love my hot dogs, or I love my peanut butter, or I love my eggs, or whatever. Or I love my wife, I love my child, I, lo I love my car, I love my boat. Define the word love. It's different to everybody. Some people treat the people they love the worst of anybody they know. Isn't that crazy? So if somebody loves you, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes not so much. Because then they say they love you. That means they think they also own you. Control you. Have a right. Because they bore you into the world. They might be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your governor, your president. It gets kind of crazy when you start thinking about that. Doesn't it? The president actually thinks that they might own your life. Because why? They're president for a couple of years. They can go in there and tell you what you better do with your life. What you better inject into your body. And mm, That's a problem for me. Because I didn't vote for the, song, the, guy, the girl, guy, whatever it is up there in that imaginary world. The wibbly and wub on the planet Earth. Where wub, that word, if it were to get around the world... A world union of beings, that's what it represents. This energy of soul that forms this energy that fires the filament up inside this gelatinous shell that I call vessel, I call body, and I call Darby and Brad and all sorts of things. This body, your body, my dog, you met him, Rocky, he got a nice big muscular body. Mother dog, baby doll, my chickens, my rabbits, my birds on the property. Um, man, they're all beings. They all share my planet with me. And now that I got water and I got things to eat and grain growing everywhere and I got birds migrating here. It's an example of how life comes to places where peaceful interaction of these species can happen. This supportive, lots of food, lots of places to sleep, lots of places to be protected from the predators. Predators. Oh, wait. Normally, that's us, isn't it? Humans. Yeah. For those of you who don't understand, humans are by far the worst predator on the planet. We kill more things of all sorts, more animals, more people than any other creature on the planet. And we do it with the weirdest of ways. In fact, 
in that imaginary world when it first started out 40 years ago, the book was beginning in the world of Wub, Wibbley and Wub, Darby would have nightmares. He'd have nightmares about things that might happen in the future one day, such as robotics that might kill. And lo and behold, today Israel announces they have this really cool new weapon on, on your roof that can shoot at people. And through a computer and all sorts of cool things, managed to hit them accurately because we don't want to have a whole bunch of people on the side being shot that are innocents. So now we can go in there in theory and be able to use our facial recognition system and a gun mounted on top of a vehicle with a computer inside of it. And you just have a facial recognition. Oh, we got him. Okay, push the button, put an X on him, and the gun shoots him out of the crowd and doesn't shoot anybody else. Now, that's so much easier than, like, Las Vegas or something like that, where you just end up shooting a lot of innocent bystanders in the process of trying to get a few of them that you're really kind of after. I'm Not that that happened, but in the world of Wibbley and Wub and Darby, it did. Now, you got to be careful these days, because would you believe I heard? Unbelievable. That our government members, fellows, um, senators, congressmen, that kind of thing, are actually going after one of their own because she didn't agree with them. Yeah, that poor young lady in the world of Wibbley and Wub, in that fantasy world, because we don't talk about real sh real stuff here. This is about that fantasy world, and what Darby thinks about as he writes about Wibbley and Wub. Because if we talked about real stuff, I don't know. <laughs> Some guy just got arrested and thrown in jail over talking about some lady, some lady that, that wanted to be president at one time, corrupt as she was, wanted to be president. And we won't mention that lady because it turns out you can get thrown in jail for 10 years for talking about people now. And this is America, guys. Yeah, I know. Freaky. So why am I here exactly? Because I, like many others, have been inspired. Inspired to speak up. Say, hey, back when I served in the military, we didn't exactly agree with taking away your rights and putting you in jail with no reason at all. And, you know, now that I'm writing this fantasy book about what could happen, because I started this a long time ago. Back when it was impossible, it couldn't happen, things like this were just never going to be. Guess what? We're there. So, you, me, a bunch of us that are having this fantasy want to maybe leave. So here's some ideas. I want to point this out. If you want to get out of the system, you have to make some decisions. What's of value to you? Money, buildings, your friends, your position, your social status. What's important to you? Your family? Hey, Lori, how are you doing today? You should call and make an appointment to visit because normally I might be out there doing something. You'll come up here and there won't be anybody up at the front office. And if you come inside the gate and you get into the B&B &B and stay overnight, generally you're going to meet us, meet Trinity, meet me anyway. Generally. We are trying to be particular about who comes. We're being very careful about the CV thing because um, I'm not care. I'm not going to get sick. I don't wear a mask much. I got maybe three hours of my nose under a mask so far in the last year. Some people are immune. Did you know that? Some people, 20%, as a matter of fact, as much as that. And the symptoms they get, you might as well be immune. It's not that big a deal. And I speak as a guy who's in that category. They keep saying is endangered. The 65-year-olds? Yeah, I'm up there. That's me. Do I look scared? I hope not. I'm happy. I've had the best year of my life last year. And I'm facing another one's going to be even better. Isn't that crazy? What's going to make it better? I feel more optimistic about people actually recognizing the value of our ancestors' work. The resources they've got sitting there, treasures waiting to be opened up. That's what I do. Um, day trip's good. Um, we don't have a lot of time to just chit-chat, but 
welcome visits. We're going to try to set tours up. The whole idea is to get people to come here, visit, see what's possible, take materials home, use our program to get your house built, get the labor there, take the parts, pay me back over time. No interest. This is to start businesses. This is to start houses. This is to try to get people to start communities. You know what communities are? Those are communing people. Communing. That means communicating and working together and usually for some unified purpose unity community we want a global community we want a world community we want world unity what a world union of beings now what does that mean it's a world union of beings being whales and dolphins and monkeys and fish and Birds and all beings, sentient beings, elephants with memories that live as long as us, whales that are getting all messed up because the earth is moving, the magnetic poles are changing. We're going through a transition. This happens on a cyclical sort of um, event like Christmas or something coming, except on a bigger scale 12,000 years, 6,000 years. Hmm. Some of you seem to think that this just was like manifested a few years ago, a couple thousand years ago, and it's going to all come to this glorious end. It's a trumpet is going to sound. And it will. But if that trumpet sounded, would you follow the lead? Would you stand up for the truth that comes with that sound? Sound, words, truth. If it's carried through that, do you see truth? Well, that's evidenced by action. Or in some cases, the reaction to what we have to say. Truth in a liar's face creates anger, gets you a counterattack, a deflection. If you don't see that happening right now, you're right, magnetic pull reversal, absolutely happening. People aren't aware of that need to catch up. People aren't aware of what's going on with the sun. People aren't aware of the reason magnetic reversal happens is because there's four gigantic gaseous planets on one side of us that haven't been there since the year 79. And because they're all on one side of us and the sun is on the other side of us, we're actually being pulled. And we're about to go ahead and see some major changes. Not a big surprise for some of us. Those of us who spend a lifetime studying this stuff, this is no big deal. It's just time. So, no, we don't kiss our bus goodbye. Well, um, we actually have a chance. There's always some of them that can survive. That's the idea. It's sort of a wash. You know, I used to be, when I was young, oh, I'd love to be able to help save the world. Well, wait a second. I got older and older and older, and I got treated by humanity in so many wonderful ways. And you see that a large part of humanity probably isn't supposed to survive this. Why? Hmm. That's sad. But it's simple. Not my choice. I choose to believe in God. And you can call God by many names. But God, by any name you give it, is both creator and destroyer. You come to birth, you leave, called death, and you attribute it to God, the power source. How does that filament get fueled inside of me that makes this gelatinous shell light up and shine so you can see me glow through this flesh, my incarnation? 
Wub, energy of soul, that forms a world union of believers, of beings, in our existence as sentient beings in many forms. And wait till the uh, aliens show up, not the ones coming from Guatemala. No, we're going to mix everything up with that, calling them aliens. No, I'm talking about alien to our present cognizance. So they may be living inside the earth, they may be living on the moon, they may be living in another planet, in another galaxy. But they are different from us as we know humans to be, like me and you, we're different. Now, I'm not going to take long today. My point was pretty simple. If you want to get out, how do you do it? Hmm. Wish I brought some water. Um, one of the ways you do it is to go ahead and... Uh, here. Um, you go ahead and get some sort of plan. What's the plan? Mmm, that tastes really bad. Moxie, original soda elixir with no fizz to it. I don't like sodas very much, but anyway. Mm. Now I can talk. Okay. Um, here's going. Anywhere in the world you find villages under the ground. Mexico, Romania, Italy, they are digging in the basement and all of a sudden they stumble on a thousand rooms. And they got places all underneath the ground. The Hopi, the Lakota. Traditionally, they go underground. You got caves and tunnels going from England all the way over to Europe. Why? Because you had to be underground because there's too much solar radiation. There's too much volcanic ash. There's too many whiffs of clouds are blowing across the ground. If you breathe them, you die. This is in all the old diaries. This is in all the old books. This is in all the old literature. And why I was a literature major, American and English literature major, is because the real history is told in literature. It is not told in the history books. The history books are what the good guys, which we all call ourselves when we win, we're the good guys when we win. Right, America? God. Get over it. The good guys don't always win. Some people lived underground because it stays 60, no, 55 to 60 actually year round down here. My 50 foot caves that go down that ground, it's 55 to 60. And with the water down there seeping out of the walls, it's pretty pure. Um, but the problem is if you get warrior wasps, warrior wasps, they're about this big. They're like a semi truck of a bee. And they get cicadas and they bring them down there and they dig these caves for them, which are about this big, over the top of my cave, which is this big. And unless you got rocks over your head, your cave caves in. Darn it. So I had to pray for rocks. So, yes, it's close enough. We've got to get rocks. Now get under rocks and you can have a cave. You don't want it to be able to liquefy and have the rock fall on your head, but you can have a cave. So... Sometimes you got to be in the right place. There's a lot of people right now that are looking for the right place. They're going up into the mountains. And this is considered one of the right places to be. Unless you have a landslide or forest fires that burn the ways up the sides of mountains and take all the oxygen away. There's all sorts of issues of going into mountains and into caves, of course. In uh, 1850, somewhere around in there, they had a magnitude 9, I think, in China. And 840,000 people died in caves built into soft, what they call soft caves, soft tunnels. Why is that a problem? Well, obviously you shake the ground enough and all of them will come down on your head. So you gotta have rocks over your head so that at least your ceiling doesn't cave in. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now in Texas, there's a nice little loophole. If you have a hole in the ground in Texas, it's not a house. You can have glass doors on the front of it, windows on the front of it, but if it goes in, you got a rock over the top of your head and it's under the ground, it's not a house. That's even better than the loophole that says if it's under 400 square foot, it's not a house. And if you call it a portable building, there's no bed and breakfast tax on it. And it's not, it's not a house. It depreciates in 10 years instead of 29 years. These loopholes allow you to go ahead and keep your money when you make it instead of have to pay it in taxes so that the government, in a fictional and imaginary world, and totally legally, um, gets to pay for your houses, which are not houses. And they get to have, say, your master suite for your daughter or your son which is not a house, it's just an outbuilding they can take with them when they leave. Under bedrock, well, bedrock is a, you know, 
a rock in a bed of dirt. It's bedrock, right? A rock in a bed. Well, that's the problem. Where I'm at, at least. When you get up higher and you get into what's called the, the Craton, which is that line where all the earthquakes are happening on, which goes through Austin, West Texas. Over there, we're having a bunch of our earthquakes right now in West Texas. Because this is all shifting. And then it cuts across and goes up to New Madrid, which is due to trigger soon. And those of you who aren't familiar with the New Madrid, it's much more dramatic when it happens than California. In California, we have a lot of people get hurt, and a lot of people drown, and a lot of things like that happen. But the New Madrid, when it rings, it last time, 1800s, when it stopped the Mississippi and it flowed backwards. Now, if you're in one of those rocks, in one of those beds that's up there around the Mississippi in a cave, when that whole thing shakes bad enough to lift up the Mississippi and run backwards, you better hope you're in a really good cave in the right spot. And you better hope you can get back out of it again or you've got a lot of good things inside of there. Because otherwise, you may spend a lot of time down in that cave. And there's a lot of really good mines up there, too. Uh, the Ring of Fire is all out in the West Coast. And people don't understand right now, we got actually active volcanoes in California. By the way, you need to watch this, by the way. PM 2.5. It is the smallest particulates in the air that are extremely, extremely dangerous. Increase your chances of getting cancer of the lungs by 33% if they get up over 10. Anyway, please pay attention. If you want to go to windy.com, pull up particulates in the air, pull up the two PM 2.5 which is much, much worse than the PM10 size particulates, which you can cough out. The 2.5 can't get back out of your lungs. You'll see two spews of it coming up. It's coming off the West Coast, particularly bad off of all the volcanoes that are going off that are now up in the upper atmosphere and they're being shifted over here and coming down these massive storms. You guys may not know what I'm talking about. It may not mean anything to you. You're not planning around being around for 30 years and being healthy and having your lungs all healthy. <coughs> He says as he coughs. Okay, now listen. That volcano out there right now in Southern California, you can actually see it in the PM 2.5 windy charts. And you can also watch it get sucked up into that storm that's going through there and then being moved across the country. Now, luckily, I'm in Texas, and a big part of being in Texas is you're south of all these streams that go by. They carry all this radiation from Fukushima and all this. Um, actually, most of the volcanoes right now are being shifted into the upper half. And as they work the way down, what happens is, is this atmospheric dust being blown 40,000 feet in the air and higher stays up there in the 200 mile an hour winds and carries along for a while. And as it's up there, it collects moisture around it and builds up these gigantic hail balls. Some of it does and comes down as huge hail balls, about the size of footballs as they've seen in India. And we will see in America. Now, if you're in one of those places that, that happens that you better be underneath some very thick rock. Because there's no roof you're underneath that's going to make it. And this has been proven over there in Europe. The Valley of the Bones, where the hailstones literally crunched the whole town, crunched all the people up under it, and then buried it in a glacier for 100 years till it melted. And they found it and wondered what the heck happened. Could this happen, guys? Yes. Will this happen? In my lifetime, old coot that I am. Unfortunately, quite likely, 2024, you're going to see a significant, significant decline. It's not just, well, if it were just the magnetic issue, it would be fine. But we're also getting into, um, as the magnetosphere collapses, the shield, Scotty, on the old Star Trek show. Um, as they collapse, what happens is the atmosphere gets closer. We get bigger lightning storms. We get a lot more transference of the positive ions of the air into the negative ions of the earth. And that transmits all the way up into the atmosphere and then all the way up to the sun. We're seeing all that with sprites and the auroras. And now that we have the instrumentation and the satellites, we can understand it. Can you? Maybe not. But I probably do a little better than most of you want to. And as I've been told... Why would you want to know all this stuff? Well, some of us can't help ourselves. So, how do we go ahead and break it down so you can do something with it? Well, I've tried to do that with get, get small, get tiny, get organic, get natural, go out and take stuff down, salvage. And so I'm trying to sell you all on salvage. Not because I won't make a lot of money on it. You don't have to buy my program. You just have to buy into the idea of it. So you go out and salvage around you and save the materials in your small towns. 
I'm looking at trying to help a small town right now. It's an old mill town. They got all billions of bricks sitting there and buildings in there letting it go to waste. They got no jobs for the kids. They got poverty. The average income is $13,000 per capita. 2,100 people. That means the average annual income of the whole town is $2.5 million. The 600 richest people in the United States who just increased their wealth by $1 trillion. Do you realize that $2.5 million for them, they pay that to an accountant and don't notice it in their budget. That's how sick this is. The disproportionate wealth in our country has reached the point that 600 people are worth $4 trillion and that Elon Musk made enough this year to pay his 4,000 employees $89,000 bonuses and still walk away with some change. And the 1% of the 1%, well, hell, the 1%'s not the rich part. It's the 1% that control the 1% of the richest. There's some names that nobody ever hears. They're the ones that have the money. And I'd, Brent, I, I, I'd be thrilled to be able to mention those in, in my fictional world where obviously none of this is true. This is just some sort of crazy old guy speaking to you from a world of wub. And that's a world where we had a union of beings all joined together from all over the galaxy that met this strange little embassy that nobody could find in Salvage, Texas, where peace is our motto. Truth. Honor. Just like the Tartarians in the days of Tartary. Most of you don't know about that. That's what we had before we did the little mind erase and the tribes of Tartary torn apart by the tribe of Judas. And then slowly over centuries an attempt to erase them. But you can't erase architecture that's in common all over the world. Red and white brick structures. I highly recommend if you haven't watched, there are some people to watch. There's some great things to watch out there. They'll teach you these things if you want to learn while you're stuck in your house. I'm not selling anything. All I'm trying to do is get you to go ahead and use these neural pathways so that you develop them out like muscles they're called brain cells neural pathways at 49 years old you start developing the frontal lobes of your brain you get 100 times the speed neural pathways if you have a vessel tuned up not stressed eating correctly exercising breathing properly you develop ganglion in the end you can actually get an upgraded computer in your later years they will outperform anything you ever had when you were younger because if you've used it properly and your memory banks are there and you've got huge pathways for both installing more erasing crap lies and garbage synthesizing new programs ai advanced intelligence that's what age experience, knowledge, wisdom, W, U, unity, wisdom, unity, belief systems, WUB, world union of beings, WUB in body. That means I create a body with this energy of soul. And then I transmit, I communicate in this case, through here. Now, next trick. Hey, Nancy, nice to see you. The next trick is, how do we, those of us light beings, part of this world union of beings, ignite the fire in the rest of our legions? Yes. We are the legions of light that must enlighten the rest of the world. Right now, who wanted this job? I didn't want this job. No. But in the book of Wibbley and Wub, 
Darby gets a job and he accepts a job in order to be able to live. It's an agreement with God. And God looks like a lot of different things, but God isn't necessarily what you think it is. If something can take any form it wants, it's not. <laughs> mm, give it a picture, give it a name. Nothing can contain. We are the manifestation, every one of us. If you can imagine all of us in another bazillion worlds full of beings, then you might be able to imagine what God could be. In the meantime, that entity I denied existed as a child that I couldn't believe in. I could talk about it. I could intellectualize it. I could speak of it. I could study it. I could tell you about all the different texts, but believe, oh my. And then my son passed away. Yeah. And had I not had the premonitions, had I not had the prophecy, had I not been given fair warning and watched it all happen anyway, well, I might not be sitting here today telling you these things. But you know what? I believe now. And in believing, I've been able to do miracles, experience miracles, and become what I consider by all my childhood expectations. Broken back, poor. Never hoping to even get to college. Talked about it. Never even talked about college in my family. In my opinion, <laughs> this is phenomenal. So when people say now, how's your day going? It's always phenomenal. Why? Because I made it this far. And at this moment in time, this is phenomenal. I'm talking to you around the world on a little tiny phone sitting on my desk that Dick Tracy would have probably gone out there and stolen if he'd been able to find one because it's that cool. <laughs> Dick Tracy was a cool character. We're in the world of the Jetsons. Just right around the corner. Are we ready? We ready? Guys, Jesus had a lot to say. It's been distorted in a lot of ways. Used by power-hungry entities. Give Caesar his taxes. Pay the rest. Tithings to God. And those in charge of that treasure chest will go ahead and buy you a ticket so you can get to heaven if you follow the rules. Oh, which rules? Uh, hmm. We have to figure that out. Where you live? I'm in Russia. Oh, that'd be Russian Orthodox. Okay. Oh, I'm in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, okay, that's a little different. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in Israel. Oops, excuse me. Oops, different. Whew. I'm in America. Oh, let me see. Christian? Oh, wait a minute. Muslim? No, no, wait a minute. Uh, where, which, what part of Where in America are you living? Please? Uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, oh you're Mormon. No, okay, that's a culture. We understand that one. Cultures are all around the world, guys. Cultures. And so what's appropriate in one culture and appropriate in another culture predominantly controlled by the religion of the times. Mind you, in a puritanical state of mind, we actually would burn a boy's palm with a hot poker if he would play with himself at night while he was asleep. We used to have that rule, you know, the rule of thumb. I'm allowed to beat my woman with anything smaller than my thumb, such as a broomstick. These are rules of thumb. Uh, women couldn't own anything thanks to religion in our country. They couldn't have their name on a title or a deed. It still happens to be the case in many countries. Culture. The cult that's matured into a society, a social system, where now, in the land of fantasy, in the land of wibbly and wub, you could actually be censored, ghosted, disconnected from your bank accounts, your credit cards. In fact, your entire communication system with the world, which is what I'm risking by talking to you all right now. 
Because even though I'm talking about a book and it's only a fantasy and it has nothing to do with the reality out there, golly gee, somebody might take it seriously and get offended and try to get me blocked, censored, and knocked off of these different platforms, which are all getting pretty picky about who gets to be on them for some reason. I want to say goodbye and have a great day and I'll be back. This was only about one thing. My promise is to help make y'all think. We, W-I-I, all the eyes in the world join together as one world union of beings, WUB, with a set of words, very small, called Wibblery, that this kind of covers how we communicate. Wibbling, mind to mind, which is telepathy, which is totally possible, I assure you. And wobbling, touching, handshakes, a kiss, a caress, soon to be wiped out by a mask near you. New regulations, hugging, kissing, no, 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 unless you got a mask on. Oh, we're going to wipe out one of the, the key ways to communicate through touch. See, I can communicate something through touch that I can't communicate any other way. I can communicate with words. I'm wibbleizing. I'm making sounds. It could be music. It could be poetry. It could be a whole bunch of things, but that's a form of communication. Just like the things I create, the houses. That's my energy of soul manifesting, becoming something. Wibbleizing. I'm making things. I'm making wibs. Wibs. Wub. Energy of soul. In body. That's a wib. These are very easy words. If I establish a bond with you, wub, lock, a bond. We lock in trust, in honor, in wub, lock. That's forever, guys. It's not a contract on the planet Earth where you can go ahead and break it now because you're an asshole and I want to take all your money and, oh, I'm getting a divorce. In wub, lock, we don't look at that as a relationship where you get a divorce. We look at that as a relationship that if you believe in another lifetime, I'm going to meet you over there. We're going to shake hands, have a drink and say, hey, wasn't that cool? If you're behind me in battle and we're in web lock, this isn't, you know, like some, oh, I got to go ahead and have intercourse with you to be in web lock. No, no. I could be a guy. I could be a girl. It could be anybody that I'm a friend with. And a friend, I mean, you're behind me. We're in war. And I know I don't have to look around behind me because if I have a, a sword go through my back, it's because you're dead. Not because you left me, because you chickened out, because you had to take a break, go on a vacation and didn't tell me. No, you're going to tell me the truth. You're going to communicate. Communication is essential. So that's weblock. Webbling, you see me webbling right now. I'm casting my image. I'm casting my words. I'm casting my light out on that web. I'm webbling. And where's it going? Who knows? Before it's done, this is recorded. This could be around in a thousand years. And for all you know, you might be getting it from the year, four years from now. How do you know? And soon, coming to you, holograms. Yeah, better than what you saw where they're on stage. Imagine if that was a president. Yeah. Imagine if that was me coming to speak to you and I'm on stage and you're all in the audience and you think it's me up there, but it's just a hologram and I'm over here in my little studio. Why? So I don't get no COVID. I don't have to fly on no airplane. I don't have to go out there and be searched and double searched and triple searched and have somebody stick a probe up me just to make sure I didn't stick something up there first. For my safety and yours. Thank you very much. I'm not flying much anymore. Why? Better be a private airplane. No, thank you. So, Nancy, it's sure nice to see you here. There are some people that get to see this. This does not go very far. It used to be with 72,000, 75,000 followers. They capped it. I never could get past that number. No matter how many signed up every week, no matter how many people like it. This is like seven years ago. All of a sudden, it started happening. And then it got a name called shadow banding. Then we got another name called censoring. Then we got ghosting. Well, somehow or another, I'm still out here, guys. It's because I'm just talking about a fantasy world. None of this is any real. I'm just a crazy old, crazy old coot. Thank you. 
but not institutionalized and not institutionalizable in a day and age when we're going to call people crazy and take away their bar license to practice because they believe in God and talk about that like this some dude named Lynn might be in a book or they might be a uh, some senator or something like that that they're going to go ahead and try to go ahead and get thrown out because they believe in things that other people don't believe in and therefore you're going to say oh now you're determined to be crazy by us and it's not a democracy anymore you don't see it our way in that kind of world which is why the whole thing about Wibbley and Wub and why Darby was writing that book and trying to get it out there for 40 years was because he had these nightmares that one day there'd be a time when his writing might get censored. And that's why that book didn't get published until much later than now. Yes. Thank you, Misty. What block is about establishing that bond between all of us? We meet each other. You're a Wubber. Yeah, you're a Wubber. <laughs> What's a Wubber? Anybody standing on the sidelines wouldn't have a clue too deep that's what I want it's a virus Wibbly is a virus hmm. cybernetics anybody ever hear of it it's how you can study somebody and when I go ahead and see if you remembered this or not and I ask you a question you go let me see cybernetics you're going to look up there why because that's where you store all your information I say what is 85 times 64 85 to 64 I'm going to go up there to math multiply uh, why don't you tell me a lie? What's your name? Is your name John? Tell me a lie. My name is uh, Bernie. Where'd I look? Well, guess what? When I lie, I just might look there. Or, um, let me see, John. This is my world of fantasy, world of making up shit. So if you watch somebody and study them while they're talking to you and flattering you and telling you all sorts of cool shit so you'll go ahead and like them and give them money and all the other kind of garbage that happens up there on the stage when again demagogue or a salesman is talking. Keep your eyes open, guys. As the same goes, wait till you see the whites in their eyes. You see them? Mm -hmm. I'm not squinting. I got nothing to hide. Do you? By the way, when you see me and I'm talking like this and I carry on so long, by the way, if you got to go, hit pause. I'll still be here. <laughs> not real. I'm an image on your screen. I'm not going anywhere. Even when I'm gone. This vessel. Well, this is the way I'm using to communicate my spirit to you, all of you, through me. This little cameras that I got fixed, got new lenses in because they were blind. All original parts, guys. 1955. American made with jeans from all over. <laughs> Actually, German jeans. I want to ask your help. I'm writing a book, in case you hadn't caught that. Except it's not the regular kind of book. There's paper. There's videos. There's a place that manifested this part of the book called Salvage, Texas, which you can't find on the map. But I assure you, it's here. There's caves. There's cliffs. There's many ponds, streams, all manifested out of the imagination, like a writer who writes a book into reality. It's called the quantum story. And to my knowledge, nobody has ever done this with such intention and without getting spotted before it was already done. That was the idea. <laughs> There's no cult. 
there's an ideology. Pure salvage living. Salvage the best of the past. Don't trash it. Learn from it. Study it. Take it apart and build better. Pure salvage living is about trying to teach your children life skills. Salvage everything we can out of the past to make it better tomorrow. I got trees that I use that are 800 years old. Find me an 800 year old tree and don't you dare cut it down if you do. I got old ones to use still. Save that new one, let it become a thousand year old tree. If you go online on YouTube, I have a couple songs out there. It's Song of Salvage, my poem done once by my son and another time by a very talented young man. And it shows women tearing the house down with some kids in a matter of eight days, high speed to music. It's to try to give you guys some guidance and some pathway. I wish I'd had it. It was there, I didn't understand it. My own father was tearing an old army barracks down when I was 17, leaving home on my bicycle with my four dollars. I could have helped him. I left him to tear it down. We didn't get along. My stepmother was a bitch. Yes. Oh, Lee, that's right. You're still here, aren't you? Some succubi managed to feed for a long time. Liar. Thieves of the human spirit. There's a lot of them out there, succubi. Demons in the form of humans. Don't think they don't exist, friends. They do. I have seen and been touched by many. You have to hug a demon to death. Give it all the love you can possibly give. Hold on, it'll bite you, it'll scratch you. But the only way to kill a demon is with love. Peace. So if we all unite, that little thing with GameStop, <clears throat> that ain't nothing. And you know why they're putting all those fences around there? Because public opinion does mean something. Now they're about to put some serious pressure on the public. Cut the food off. Cut the resources. Why? You know what? Never under never ever underestimate the power of the ignorant masses. When you put a demagogue in the front of it and they turn on the rich, there ain't no place to hide. So before that happens, the rich will turn us on each other. Don't let it happen. I grew up with poor kids. I grew up with barefoot Indians in Bolivia. I grew up in dumpsters where I was eating out of them while white people were looking in and I was white. And trust me, if you're poor, you're still, in many societies, considered to be trash. All these babies were aborted. Therein lie the solutions to our tomorrow. It is those tiny little spirits coming to earth to occupy flesh that will create the solutions. The 12 year olds that come up with ways to dissolve plastic. We can't kill off all these new entities coming from all over the galaxy to incarnate to help. That is wrong. It is a play by the demons in charge to stop our reinforcements from arriving. You get it? You got to grow your light beings. Give them all the tools while they're young. Make them strong. Teach them. Give them strength and they shall make it possible to preserve peace without war.
A good warrior doesn't draw his sword. He negotiates peace. If a sword must be drawn, it is the sword of love, and you use the side of it, if at all possible, to spank your enemy and send him on his way, not to chop his head off. The sword of anger? Ugh. Quick, expedient, heads roll, blood, and you have it cleaned up and replace it. But you're never going to get the same results. Please. Wibbledee and Wub. I'm going to write a book, guys. I spent a life at it. If you help me a little bit, since I can't get on the bookshelves, I'm not going to get into Amazon. <laughs> Again, the only way for this to grow is for us to write the book together. I need more Wubbers. W-U-B-B-E-R. And wibblers. Wibblers. What are wibblers? Wibblers are people who like to wibble mentally. Meditate. Focus on this possibility. And wibblizers. People who want to write about it. Create art that hides the meaning of a world union of beings for the rest of us to share. And know that there's other wubbers out there. There's hope. We're all working together around the world. And they can't censor wibblery and wub. <laughs> Why? Hi, hey, Betty. Because it is truly, truly just a crazy set of words. Only 20 little words about wibblery and wub and wublock and how we could form this world union of beings. And it's so crazy that the intercosmic wub society, which is all the others and the other planets that have already done this, that are watching, waiting, and hoping to help. And they are. I'm the messenger, Darby. <sighs> Trust me. I didn't ask for it. I just asked for him. Why am I here? So, please. Yes, I'm a dreamer. Absolutely. You're all part of my dream. Doing dreaded taxes, honey? If you're paying taxes, you're doing it wrong. Dear Betty, you need to own a house in Salvage, Texas, a B&B &B you can write off on the government so you don't pay taxes. You write off your trip down here. You write off your food. You write off your gas. You write off everything in your little business in Texas where we don't pay income tax. And then you go back up there when it's warm and you come down here when it's cold. And if the shit hits the fan, Betty... And you're a truthful, honest, positive person. Those are the few I hope to have here one day. And that day may come soon. Y'all take care. You know, it's a beautiful day. That tomorrow we're waiting for. Hmm. How's it taste? See you soon. Bye.